I'm gonna interrupt. I feel like you're unbelievably smooth. That's not how this is gonna go. Because that's the worst thing you can do for her. The worst thing you can do for her right now is that. If you care about someone, be real with them. Our next episode comes from season four and features a young woman named Blair who was being emotionally tormented by a former internet love interest. During a time when Blair had been down on her luck, homeless and depressed, she met a girl named Marky on Instagram. And Marky really gave Blair the support she needed to pick herself up and get back on her feet. She happened to just call every time I was gonna do something stupid. So she like literally saved my life. Without her, who knows if we'd even be sitting here. Around four months after meeting online, we decided to meet in person. Problem is, a week before I was supposed to meet her, she got kidnapped. A week after that, she calls me from a mental hospital, and Marky decided it was best if we were just friends. I was completely devastated and never found out what really happened. I bought her a plane ticket from California to New York, and then no one knows where she is. I called her dad, and I was basically like, where is she? And he's like, well, I'm not going to get into it, but she doesn't want to be with you. Once we began investigating, we soon uncovered disturbing details about Marky. Go to the Instagram account. Whoa, I'm a terrifying person. I'm not normal. The numerous things I could tell you I've done are very scary. Hashtag scary, terrifying, crazy, troubled. I don't know what this is, man. We could be dealing with a very troubled individual. We managed to get Marky to agree to meet with us. The question was, would we meet caring and supportive Marky or crazy and troubled Marky? You okay? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Marky. Wow. Well, you're very excited. I'm very, very excited. I'm trying not to, like, jump into her arms and plow her down to the floor. <laughs> but it's, it's not exactly the reaction that I expected. Yeah, if anything, <laughs> we've been kind of ready for... The worst? I mean, look, we all want to be excited, obviously. Yeah. But I just want to, like, get some things mm. out of the way first. Of course. Well, if you guys want to go sit down at that table in the shades... Oh. So, OK. From what we gathered from, from Blair's story was that you didn't come to New York. And then she got a strange phone call from you, like, a, a couple days afterwards, saying that you were in a hospital of some kind and that you weren't going to come and you were still in love with your ex-girlfriend, and then it was over. I never got answers, I never got reasons, and that's all I want is why. So I was 17, and the man pretty much didn't connect me. I went on my own. What? What? He persuaded me to go with him because of issues that would happen in New York that he saw. He saw issues? How could he? Who's he? I don't get this. Is he an ex of yours? No. Oh. So I don't know who she, just he? Just... It's a very private situation. I can't really let out names. What had happened was I had a dream that I went to New York and I died. And I told him about the dream. And he told me that if I didn't go and repent my sins, I guess, I don't know, he didn't make it clear, but he told me pretty much if I didn't confess everything to him, I would die in New York. And so that pushed me to the limit as to where I felt like I needed to go for you, for me, for my family, so I could stay alive. I mean, were you, were you like far away in the middle of nowhere? I was up in the mountains. Why does this person have such, so much influence over you? He was a close personal friend. You don't think you could have told this guy you need to let me know that you're not coming. No, because he didn't want to talk to you. He didn't want anything to do with you. You couldn't talk to me? I'm, just, I'm It's a terrible story, and I'm sorry that I still don't, I don't. Fully understand. I don't understand it. Did that story make any sense to you? Of course not. Nothing about what she says makes any sense. In fact, it felt disrespectful to have come all that way only to be fed garbage like that. But the fact that Blair was still sitting there was a testament to just how strong her feelings still were for Marky. That's why I reacted the way I did when this happened. Hey, I'm a psychotic, crazy person. I have a semi-lying problem, and I'm absolutely in love with you. I'm gonna interrupt. 
because that's the worst thing you can do for her. The worst thing you can do for her right now is that. If you care about someone, be real with them. It's really dangerous to say I love you to someone, I want to spend my life with you, even though we just met 10 minutes ago, and not have them go into a tailspin. I love it when you get worked up. Like you were possessed. I felt like Marky was possessed. <laughs> I mean, she was being completely reckless with her words, and I, I couldn't let her do that to Blair. I mean, listen, it was clear that Marky was struggling on her own with some serious issues, but I just didn't want Blair to get dragged down after coming so far. And in the end, Blair decided it was best not to pursue a romantic relationship with Marky. It's time for me to make myself happy. How are things going between you and Marky now? Well, if our handshake's any indication, you could say we're still on the outs. 